It's September 12th, 1971 in Attica, New York. Richard X. Clark walks across a massive concrete yard that's covered in mud. He stops, a warm wind blowing through his hair, and stares at the site in front of him. Clark is standing in a prison yard at the Attica Correctional Facility. Normally, this area is under tight supervision, with armed guards standing watch, controlling the movements of every prisoner. But everything changed three days ago, when the inmates decided they'd had enough. They were tired of the abuse, of the guards' violence and mistreatment. So the inmates rose up, and together, they took control of the prison. As Clark looks out over the yard, he still can't believe what he's seeing. Hundreds of inmates move around like free men. A group of hostages sit huddled together on an old mattress with prisoners standing guard. The yard has been turned into a sprawling encampment. It's a democratic society that's run by the prisoners themselves and led by a small group of leaders, including Richard X. Clark. He's only 25 years old. He's slender and wears black framed glasses. Even though he's young, he knows that he and the other inmates have made history. Now that they control Attica, they can demand significant changes, improve the lives of prisoners, but it's even bigger than that. Clark knows they can change prisons across the country, maybe even the rest of the world. Still, as he looks around the yard, Clark can see that the feelings of triumph and revolution are already fading. It's day three of the standoff, and the inmates look exhausted and on the brink of making a rash decision. It's a situation that could only grow worse with some news that has just arrived. Clark approaches an inmate named Frank Smith, a towering man who was appointed head of security. Frank, we've got a problem. Yeah, no kidding, we've got a problem. It's been three days. We're not getting anywhere. We've got the prison, but we also got state police surrounding us. I know. But listen, there's something else you need to see. Clark takes out a message he received from a government official, the man who runs the prisons in New York State. It's from Russell Oswald. It's a demand to surrender. Richard, he's been saying that from the start. I know. But Frank, this time, uh, something's different. He's not asking anymore. This is a, this is a threat. Oh, well, let's tell everyone. They gotta know. If our people hear this, they're just gonna dig in their heels. I don't think they need to know that it's come to an ultimatum. You sure about that? I think so. I think it's the only option. If it were the only option, you wouldn't be talking to me right now, trying to figure things out. So here's what I think. When we took over, we made a promise. We make decisions together, all the inmates together. So whatever's on that piece of paper, you gotta read it out loud and let them decide. Clark exhales and shuts his eyes. <sighs> okay. The two men make their way across the yard to a set of scuffed wooden tables. Clark grabs a microphone wired up to a speaker. At the sound of his voice, hundreds of prisoners suddenly look up. Clark raises the document in the air and announces that he just received a message from Oswald, the head of prisons. The commissioner demands that they end the rebellion and that they release the guards they're holding hostage. Oswald says they need to do so immediately. Then, and only then, will he meet with the inmates to discuss their grievances and possibly changes to the prison. Clark sets down the note and looks at the men in the audience, prisoners who for years have suffered torture at the hands of guards, grievous medical treatment, an unspeakable nightmare day after day, all of which has pushed them to this brink. As Clark looks over the crowd, he asks who's in support of accepting the proposal of letting the hostages go. The yard is silent. Then Clark asks who's against the proposal. And all at once, hundreds of men yell out in anger. It's decided. There will be no surrender. Clark swallows hard, because while the men have once again stood up for themselves and their own dignity, Clark suspects that the state is done bargaining. And if that's true, it could be just a matter of hours before they attempt to retake Attica by force. <laughs> 